Hi guys, how's everybody this morning? I'm so sorry we had some technical issues uh, with our computer and internet. I think a lot of people have had issues today, a little bit of drama. So, but I hope everybody's doing well um, in this obviously a time we're all in, living in, and uh, like to bring a little bit of uh, happiness to you this morning. Uh, I'd like to thank obviously Paul and David for being part of this amazing event. I'm very honored to be included in this lineup of fabulous cake artists. Um, as Paul said, there is a, um, on the Cake Flicks, there is a downloadable uh, instruction for making the wisteria I'm going to show you today. And then plus also, um, there is obviously, um, you can, uh, my email is on there, so you can obviously ask questions, post those onto the um, obviously platform, and I'll be happy to answer those. Scott is cameraman and also answering questions. Normally we have one of our team members, but because we're obviously um, uh, obviously confined to being just the two of us in the building uh, we're uh, quarantined so we're obviously Scott is doing two he's wearing two two hats today but anyway um, so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the wisteria so you have your downloadable um, instructions obviously these are as I said I've done this instruction for you so this makes it easy for you to obviously be able to make the wisteria um, and go through this with me all right and remember we will be uh, putting this on the um, on the um, the platform on the cake flicks platform so you will be able to um, obviously watch this again and obviously you can slow me down or uh, stop me for a little while while you catch up but anyway, I um, apologize again again for getting started late, and I do, do really do apologize for that. Um, obviously, we did a tryout yesterday, and we were here sort of early this morning, and it was working okay. But uh, obviously, technical things, I'm sure David and Paul can relate to that. But um, so for the wisteria, um, so wisteria is obviously a, uh, a, fl a flower related to the pea family. So when we have uh, things like sweet peas, um, obviously sweet peas are, are related to the uh, wisteria family. This is part of the legume and pea family. So sweet peas, which are a popular, obviously, uh, flower that we make in weddings and things like that. So this is part of that pea family. And then the wisteria, another flower that obviously blooms in the springtime is laburnum. So laburnum is also a, like almost a yellow wisteria. Um, and then um, the other flower is the lupin. This is actually the Texas blue bonnet. Um, so uh, in Texas, this is a wildflower and uh, obviously grows in fields just completely covered and it is called the Texas blue bonnet. But this is a variety of lupin, all right? So the lupin is basically sort of a very similar technique to that. It's just the little spur part here um, and it only has one, obviously, of the sepals on the outside of it. And then the top of this is a little bit like a chinchirinchi where you have this cone and you snip it with scissors, okay? But as I said, that's the basics of making the lupin. And um, so, but, uh, so they're all related family uh, to this. Now, to start off with, I'm going to um, take a 30 gauge wire, okay? I'm going to take a 30 gauge wire here, and I'm going to cut that with some uh, either scissors or wire cutters. I did have a couple of questions yesterday um, from obviously viewers uh, asking, like, does it matter if it's green wire? Um, on your, there is a list on your um, um, handout of obviously what wires you would use, and it has. 28 gauge green, 22 gauge green, and 20 gauge green. But these could all be white as well. This is a paper covered wire. And generally when I'm making most of my smaller flowers like this, I would have uh, usually cut the wire into thirds, okay? And um, so this is the wire. Uh, little things I'm going to share with you, like in my classes, I generally put wires on magnets. Um, so that means it makes it very easy for um, when I'm teaching a class, like my students, the wire doesn't go all over the place, all right? Um, in fact, in my classes, this is sort of how my little setup that I use, which is um, a piece of styrofoam. And then I have here a magnetic block. So when I'm going around or my assistant's going around, we can pop the students' wires onto there. And then I have, uh, these are just poly dowels that I've got to put my larger wires in. And then these are actually uh, little cake pop straws, um, or you could use um, on here, you can use um, also uh, cocktail straws. So these are cocktail straws, obviously you buy in most supermarkets or liquor stores and that have this. And uh, these are, as I said, just cocktail straws. So you can cover these over the styrofoam block, all right? So it's just a sort of a way to stay organized. Because I'm a pastry chef and chef instructor at the French Pastry School, I obviously um, teach my students a lot about organization. And uh, part of my uh, structure of teaching is that I try to be very organized with my students and they have everything they need in place, okay? 
Now we're going to start off in your instructions it says you're going to take your 28 gauge wire and we're going to make a floral tape bud. Now floral tape bud, sorry Scott just was talking to Paul just to check everything was okay. So uh, with the floral tape bud we're going to make this like almost like a little cotton bud or a q-tip. I'm going to use some quarter width floral tape now, floral tape, like Natalie was using, obviously white floral tape. Floral tape comes in many colors, even gray and pink and colors like that. Very rarely do I ever use it full width. A lot of times I will cut it into quarters or into half, all right? So this is obviously just cuts the tape into, into quarters. And so then I can just pull this off. When you first start, you know, there are lots of little things that you can use, but this is a little tape cutter. So this will cut the tape into quarters. Um, and into half. There are several companies that have tape cutters. This particular one is my own brand, but obviously there's a gem one, which is white, there's a cell shredder. So we're going to now take, um, in your directions it says, um, you're going to take 28 gauge uh, green wire, quarter width light green floral tape, four times H times four. So what that means is I'm going to wrap around the end of the wire four times, okay? And then going the H stands for hook, and then four more times on top. Now. Um, when you first start, especially those of you that are new to sugar flower making, most people are floral tape challenged. Um, and so usually when you're using floral tape, if you hold it between your thumb and first finger, also just stretch your tape slightly before you start work. So what we're going to do is just going to go around once to get started, and then you're going to go two, three, four. So you see how I've just made this little tiny floral tape bud on the end of this, all right? And then because this is such a thin wire, I can just bend this over with my fingers. So I'm actually making this little hook on the end like this, all right? And then I'm going to then go another four times, one, two, three, four. Now most of the things I'm teaching you uh, today in this little short demonstration are things I've developed over the years. When I made my first ever sugar flowers when I was 10 years old, um, I was working from an Australian book, actually Bernice Verico's book from Australia. My grandmother bought it for me. I'd had my tonsils out, so I thought, well, that would be fun. She knew I liked baking and cake decorating. So I had to go and make my first flowers. And so I was very despondent because like it just says, take a ball of paste. So things like the size guide I used, I actually developed this as a teaching method to measure off my paste, all right? Um, and uh, when I first started teaching, in fact, a lot of the people like Margaret Ellis and Alan Dunn in the UK, when I first started teaching, I used to use vegetable associations. So I would be using like garden pea size or a chickpea or a baked bean size piece of paste. And the thing is, is that uh, it was sort of, it was okay. But then when I started traveling a lot internationally, it became very complex because obviously I'd have to go and find local beans and peas and things. So that's where the size guide was born. Now, a lot of you know probably Margaret Ford from Cell Cakes and she has retired now, but um, she uh, and I developed a, a book video combination called Sugar Facts and we used the size guy was launched in there, a plastic one. So anyway, so you sit, and this is something you can obviously do, keep some wire and tape in the car. You could obviously sit and watch the TV when you obviously, once we get back to some sort of normality, when you go to the beauty shop having your hair done or they're going to have your mani-pedi, you could sit there and make your floral tape buds uh, while you're having your hair done and your nails done. All right, so you can sit and make these very easily. So now I'm gonna take some paste. Now I'm using um, white paste. So there are several options you have with paste. You can use a homemade paste, which obviously, is what we refer to in the US as a scratch paste, so with Tylose powder. If you go on to Google and just put in Nicholas Lodge gum paste, you'll see dozens and dozens of, and on YouTube, if you go onto YouTube, you'll see my video from Craftsy Blueprint that Paul has some amazing classes on as well. And Craftsy do have this weekend a free weekend, so, but uh, there is a video on there making the Tylose gum paste. Um, I use in a lot of my classes the Renshaw gum paste, uh, the Renshaw brand. This is the packaging for the US, this is the UK packaging. I do find so here in the United States, because we have high humidity and it's a lot warmer than England, um, we do have problems with it drying very quickly and especially working in the AC with the air conditioning on. So what I do is again, I use generally, if you watch any of my YouTube videos, I reference this 85 grams of gum paste. And then what I would then add or flower modeling paste, then I'd add 15 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant to it. So I found by adding some sugar paste rolled fondant to the 85 grams of gum paste, what that does is going to give you a paste that doesn't dry quite as quickly. All right. 
Um, another paste that's excellent um, is Arati. So Arati is uh, obviously an amazing cake artist from India, um, and I know Arati pretty well from Sugar Inn. And um, so this is Arati's paste, and it has a humid and basically a regular one. Again, we use the humid one here in the United States. That is, so those are really the three pastes that I use and would really recommend, okay? Now, uh, when we are making the flowers, we're going to start off by measuring off your little balls of paste. So I've already got these pre-measured here. So I'm going to take, so in your instructions there it says, uh, brush floral tape bud with egg white and it's turned to a number four ball of white paste. Now, number four is on your size guide. Um, so here on the size guide. Now I did post on the um, Cake Flicks uh, website as well, or on the page. Um, there is a downloadable one, so you can go to Google and just put in uh, Flower Pro downloadable size guide, and then you actually cut that out. And I did have some photographs there of uh, showing how to do that, but you just download it onto cardstock and then use a hole punch. Um, for number one, two, and three, you can poke through with like a scribe needle here, all right, to the size you need this to be. And then um, number four is actually a regular hole punch will give you the right size. So if you use just a regular hole punch, okay? And then the other numbers, five through 16, if you just use a hole punch and then you just cut around with a pair of small scissors or you could use an X-Acto knife, a scalpel to cut around there, okay? So those are, as I said, that will give you a size guide. So you can print that off so you could whip up some wisterias this afternoon um, or this evening or this morning where obviously wherever you're watching from, okay? So, anyway, so when we measure on the size guide, we measure a number four. So number four is going to go into the size guide guide. So when you measure on the ball of paste, you want about one third below the hole and about two thirds above the top of the hole. Now, if you were making, say, um, like 12 wisteria, so obviously I've got a little spray of wisteria here I'm going to put together. So I made actually 12 wisteria. So what you do is you then would make another um, another 11 balls of paste. And generally I use a little silicone mat, like a little small sill pat or a little silicone mat and just a little uh, cup on top. That gives you an airtight seal. And that means your little balls of paste won't dry out, okay? Now when we are using the paste, so I'm going to take some egg white. Um, this is something I found works really well. This is for kids uh, painting and it's a little egg white. It's actually a paint pot. And this works wonderful because when you're using your paintbrush, you can just brush against the rim. When you're using a wire, you can dip the wire in and pull that against the rim, okay? So just gonna use a small paintbrush. But what's nice about this, you can just wipe it clean, pop this and pop it in the fridge, and obviously just keep this for several weeks, all right? I also use that for edible glue when I teach classes. Now, when I make sugar flowers, I have always used egg white, all right? I was very fortunate, actually fortunate and maybe not so fortunate because <laughs> we had a lot of fun and we're a bit naughty, but I went to the National Bakery School in London with Tomby Peck, and so Tomby Peck was actually my partner, and she used to, you know, when I piped something in Royal Ison, she'd be slapping it off and wiping it off because she knew I could do better. So she um, was a big mentor in my life, and Alan Dunn's as well. I met Alan Dunn when actually he was 17 and I was 21 and uh, we've been very close friends ever since. Now, we're going to take a little bit of vegetable shortening. Um, this is white fat or vegetable shortening. You can also use kofir, like coconut oil. And I'm just gonna touch my finger onto that. And I'm gonna do what I call conditioning the paste. So this is gonna just basically give your paste elasticity. All right, and it also extends the working time of the product as well. So we're then going to just take your floral tape bud. You're gonna insert the floral tape bud into here going to mold this around. Now I also had another question yesterday from a viewer who obviously has downloaded the instructions and she was asking me if you didn't have 28 gauge wire could you use 26 or 30 and I would say 30 gauge because you don't want to look like your wisteria has had electric shock treatment and look too stiff okay. So then you're going to now make this into a cone shape. So I hold my thumb and finger like this and just going to make this into a cone shape and this cone shape, this wants to be, um, as you can see here, um, it wants to be approximately uh, half an inch or 13 millimeters long, all right? So size guide um, has a ruler on it, so that makes it very convenient. All right, so you want this to be about half an inch or approximately about 13 millimeters long, okay? Now I'm going to use my little companion tool. Companion tool is uh, also commonly known by a lot of my students now through Flower Pro as the Nick Stick, all right? Um, and, uh, but this is a wonderful little tool. And um, if you look on Paul's and um, David's, uh, yesterday I posted about my museum. 
part, you'll see how when I first started, I used to use porcupine quills from South Africa, and we used to go to the fishing shops in England and buy the uh, fishing floats made from the porcupine quills, and then uh, my dad would take the little wire end off of it and then sand them, and that's what I used to use in my classes. So I'm using the needle tool end of my tool here, and you can see how what I have is I have this on my finger. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to just come from the bottom here and I'm just going to pull that down. So you see you just scrape with the needle tool end so it actually sort of almost like forms over your finger. So you see how it's actually formed over the curve of your finger here like this. And you just pinch that and that gives you your little beak. All right. Now, um, as I explained, you know, when I started at 10 years old, the other thing I found very frustrating it said when I made roses, just take a hook of water hook and stick it into the paste, and then they came off the end. The floral tape body I use in, I have taught and made over 400 different varieties of flowers in sugar, and I have um, used, uh, as I said, this technique for probably about 200 of those flowers. So a lot of flowers I make the centers of, I use a floral tape body in different sizes and different thickness wires. So then you would pop those into your little straws. Now the reason why I use the straws, all right, is when you have a 28 or a 30 gauge wire, it's very soft. So when you try and push it in a cake dummy or into a styrofoam block, it's going to bend very easily. So you actually just pop these into the little straw like this, you see, and it's going to be ready for you to use. So you just whip up, you know, 12, 15, 200 of those, depending on what you want. On the leaflet, on the actual um, handout there, this shows a cake I made um, for a Mother's Day collaboration here in the U.S. a couple of years ago. And you see I've got wisteria all around. So there's actually about 100 wisteria on that particular cake, all right? But it's a pretty basic flower to make. And uh, why I chose this is this also uses pretty basic equipment, all right? Now, um, I use a pasta machine when I'm rolling out paste, all right, because it gives me uniform thickness. So I use the KitchenAid pasta machine. So I've rolled out my pasta through my pasta machine on number five thickness, all right? Pasta machine goes up to number eight. You can also use a hand crank one as well. Now, so I've rolled out some paste. Um, this is um, called a multi-flap, all right? It's what I keep my gum paste flowers in, and it's got two plastic sheets in here. So what I do is here, I roll out some paste, all right? And then I'm going to take my, um, some of it and I'm going to put on the gray part, which is the bottom, so I can move that freely. Now I'm going to take a little bit of cornstarch, corn flour in my small little pouch here. I'm using here the two smallest sizes from FMM. This is the FMM rose petal set, all right? Now it could be metal or plastic. This is just the FMM set, which most of you probably have. Um, you could use the like for example a metal cutter, this is a little bit more elongated, but this round cutter is a little bit more technically the correct shape you want in, okay? So, so what I do here is I, as I said, take the paste out, and I'm gonna take that out, so I put a little bit of cornstarch on the top, and then when I'm cutting out, what I'll do is I'll just cut out 12 petals at a time, or however many I need, you see? So rather than, and because I've got cornstarch, it stacks between them, and then you can just pop that out and you can just pop these into your flap here. So you're just gonna pop these into your flap and you see how they separate really easily, all right? So you see how you're just gonna separate these really, really easily, and that will be how you would cut out your little small pieces. Obviously, you pop your excess paste back in your bag. Now, um, in your directions, um, so reading through as, you've, as when you read these, if you've already got them or when you do this later on, so cut out um, R, uh, FMM RP1, that's the smallest pedal. Cut pedal about two thirds of the way down on the rounded end using spring action scissors and open up like a heart shape. So I'm gonna use spring action scissors, all right? Now yesterday when we were doing the handout, um, I usually refer to, especially when I have younger students, I'll usually say a heart shape. Obviously we have um, people that know what Pac-Man is, so this looks a bit like Pac-Man, all right? Like a heart shape. So what I do here is I just take my scissors I'm going to cut two-thirds of the way down the uh, pedal, and I'm going to open it up like a Pac-Man or a lobster claw, or think of almost like a bit like a heart shape, all right? Um, and that's your first, the first step. Now, you can, of course, if you, were, you, if you, when I made 12 of these the other day, I obviously just made 12 of these and had them in my flap. Now, I'm going to use my Flower Pro um, this is my Flower Pro Ultimate Petal Veiner. Now this is wonderful when you're making like what I'm showing you today or sweet peas because you can actually vein five of them at the same time, okay? So what you then do is you're just going to take, the, take these petals here and you just will line these up. And I use generally a little scraper like this. This is a great little scraper and uh, makes it easy to do. 
But what this does, this makes it very, very quick for production work, okay? Now you could of course use any type of single rose petal veiner like this. So these will just go uh, into a group and the pointed end is there, gonna be here. You're then going to take the, this, all right, to place it on the top and I use my uh, easy press. So this is an acrylic, um, like a ganache plate, all right? Um, but this is great for the silicone because it distributes the weight. So especially when I'm making roses, so I'm just going to press mostly in the center part because that's where I need it. But when I, if I had, a, say, a 90 millimeter rose there, I would obviously press over the surface. And then what's actually nice, that will stay stuck to the silicone, you see? So it actually just stays stuck to the silicone. Now, you have obviously five petals here, okay? Now, this, because of the weight of it, we can actually just keep the petals in here until we use each one, or you could refer, return them back to your flap, okay? I'm going to use my little, um, this is a little small mini pad, all right, so this is a lot of you have the cell cakes, yellow pads, or FMM ones, or PME ones, or different ones. So what you do here is you're going to just take that, so you see I've just left the top on here, and then that of course it stops it drying out. I'm going to just place this onto the soft side of my pad, and then there's three options you can use here. We can take the companion tool, all right, so with my companion tool here, I can just ruffle around the edge of it with the companion tool. So you can just make like little ruffles like that. You can also use a medium sized ball tool. All right, so you can just go around with your ball tool half on and half off the paste. Or you can also use like, for example, a stick. And this is, uh, some of you probably have like the cell cake sticks, which is the large stick there. So just soften in just slightly. Now, whenever you do a pedal, whatever side you soften, you soften, that will ultimately be the underneath of the pedal because you will erase the veining off of this a little bit. Other simple things I use are like cosmetic sponges. So what I do is I turn this over onto a cosmetic sponge. Okay, I'm gonna put this at the end. I'm gonna take my, and I kept my egg white brush. I keep this in a wet towel. This is just like a washcloth or flannel, and that just stops it getting crusty. But I have always used egg white because structurally I find it stronger than edible glue. It also, in a lot of my classes I teach, dries more quickly as well. So we're gonna put just a little bit of egg white just on the tip of the heart there. And then I'm going to take my, so it looks like a little bit like a beak, all right? So it looks a little bit like, almost like a little parrot beak or bird beak. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna just put the, the bottom of the, and you just press onto the top here. So you really wanna let these dry for two or three hours and you just mold the point of the rose petal around there and you just close this up. So this is very much like the wing petals you have on a sweet pea, all right? So that will be the, the first stage, okay? So then you would make, you know, obviously those. Now when you do the wisteria, we leave some of them as is. So some of them will be left just as like the beak. They will be like the small buds. And then I will also have two or three of them, if you look on the photographs, if you have that, two or three of them I will do just that almost like, because you're going to sort of pinch it a bit like a taco shape, all right? So you just have that small, almost like heart-shaped petal on them. And then you'll have the fully open flowers will have the secondary petal, which is the uh, rose petal. So this is going to be made in the same, uh, same basic technique, all right? So obviously you put the corn flour, corn starch on there, and then cut, 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 pop them out, just very quick to do. Because as Paul said, I've been in this industry for obviously 42 years, you know, a lot has changed in our industry, um, but also it means that, uh, you know, I've developed a lot of teaching techniques that obviously I pass on to my students. So I'm just gonna get rid of those ones because we finished with those now. So then you will then do exactly the same with five or however many you need of the outside uh, petals here. And again, just gonna pop, the, pop this on the top and just gonna press this down onto there, okay? and it's gonna take this off, so it's gonna give you the veining onto your uh, rose petal, okay? Now again, we're going to just take the, gonna take this, so again, you can use your, uh, whichever technique you want. I use uh, the little companion tool a lot. Um, I really like the companion tool because it's very flexible, and I use this now in a lot of my classes as an alternative to other things. So you soften, and then on the same side as you soften, you're going to use the point of your needle tool end of your companion tool, and you're going to just scrape down the back. So what you're doing is you're making a lateral vein. Your lateral vein is your central vein, and uh, this lateral vein is gonna go down the back of the pedal. 
and then in your instructions it tells you then to turn it over because this is going to be like a, almost like I think of a Mexican taco shell this is going to be like a reverse taco okay so you turn it on so the basically the side that I softened and did the line on is on the underneath here okay so then I will take my this one here and then I would put again a little bit of egg white just onto the point of this and then going to take this and just again you see how working on the cosmetic sponge I can push in there like so it's a really really easy way to get that and just use a little bit of corn flour corn starch on your fingers now the um, little bag I'm using here is a white like pantyhose like a knee high uh, tight and uh, that's what I have my corn flour corn starch in and then you're going to do you're going to just pinch this so this comes back and then where your crease is, remember the crease is on the back here, you're going to just do like a reverse taco here. So you see how it almost is going to fold back there like so. All right. And so what you'll end up with, this is a, a dry one here. But the thing is, when you're making this, I would do all of the you know, little cone, the first beak part first, let that dry two or three hours. I put them in a food dehydrator at 115 or uh, 40 degree, 45 centigrade, and uh, just put them in there for like 30 minutes and they dry. I use a food dehydrator for most of my sugar flowers to dry them quickly. And then of course you go through like a production line doing the ones here and the ones here. So that's how you would make the actual flowers. So as I said, very easy to do. Um, so really no, not a difficult flower to make. Next, I'm going to move on to show you the leaves. Now, the leaves are going to be made with number five ball of moss green. And I'm actually using Arati's paste here just to show you because it does come in a lovely uh, moss green color. And um, so Arati has the, the green paste, which is here. And I'm going to use the, so this is going to be a number five. Now, again, this is a technique I developed many years ago of making really simple little leaves. They're made without any cutters. Um, I'm going to take a number five size ball of paste. I'm going to just condition the paste. This is what I call conditioning it. Because just like us, you know, we sometimes get stressed. So at the end of the day, that's where you we might have a massage or a glass of wine or something stronger. Um, gum paste is when you take it straight out of the pack, it's stressed, right? It's quite tight. So working a little bit of shortening into it is like giving it a nice massage. It's going to become nice and mellow. So you're going to use a number five size ball of paste. All right. Again, you'd measure however many of those you want. You're going to take your wire, and with my wire, um, this is going to then, um, on the leaves here, it says that you're going to brush egg white three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters on the wire. So you're just going to take your wire here and just going to brush the egg white onto there about th three quarters of an inch or about 20 millimeters, okay? Then you're going to stick this. This is going to go through your ball of paste, all right? So you just want to have about 15 millimeters, about 10, uh, 10 um, millimeters or uh, about half an inch exposed. Use a little bit of corn flour on your fingers and you just roll this into a carrot shape. So you see basically the wire is going right the way to the end, all right? I'll just get my little finger in here. So the wire has actually gone all the way through and the wire will stop about here, okay? I have the last of my little hand on my different classes. Just gonna mold around the bottom here. All right, then I'm just going to pinch that with my thumb and finger. So that's just going to establish. And then on the green side of the pad, which is the firm side. So if you have like a cell cakes one, that would be on the more orange side. PME have a soft and a firm pad. And then you're going to use, you can either use like a stick or a pin. Um, you know, my ones I have are green and black, but a lot of you maybe have the cell cakes ones that are both white. And so all you do here is you're just going to just roll back and forward like this quite gently. All right. And you see how that is going to give you a perfect leaf. Now, these leaves I use for jasmine, uh, winter flowering jasmine, wisteria. Um, you can use it for all different types and even just as like little filler leaves, all right? I'm going to take then my um, Flower Pro, uh, this is my uh, multi-purpose vena, all right? Now, this is, uh, has a concave side and a convex side, so we're using the right-hand side. You're either going to take a little tiny bit of vegetable fat, shortening, okay? Now, a lot of you that live in the UK, obviously, Trex is a popular brand, but we in the US use Crisco. Crisco is not quite as oily as Trex, all right? Um, it has a higher uh, melting point over our temperatures, so it actually is, I find, better. It doesn't get all slimy like Chris, uh, the Vitrex does. You can also use Easy Release. Easy Release is a product I use for tappets and things like the Wacket Cutters. Um, this is coconut oil, lemon oil, and beeswax. Um, or you can also take, obviously, coconut oil. But anyway, you're just going to put a little touch of that onto the right-hand side. 
you're going to take your leaf and this mold is quite unique in that it has a cavity here like a little trough cavity to accommodate your wire because pretty much most of the other double-sided veiners on the market don't have anywhere to accommodate your wires so with all of my flower pro range I have these little hollows so it means it makes it easy to uh, you want wires won't come out you're going to fold this over all right, and I'm just going to press on the side here. All right, and then when you take that out, you see how you're going to have a beautiful leaf front and back. See? Now, the um, leaf of the wisteria is not really thinned. It doesn't really have any shape to it. So then all you're going to do here is going to have, take your companion tool. With your companion tool, I hold this, and then I'm going to pinch this to a slight taco. All right? Obviously, having a school in Japan, taco in Japanese is obviously octopus, but obviously we think about Mexican taco. So this is like a taco shell, so you get that V shape, all right? Now, if your leaf doesn't look the same as mine, all right, because again, obviously I've made a few thousands of these, takes a little practice. You can also give it a quick manicure, pedicure with a pair of scissors. So if one side's a bit different shape, you can just trim that up. And I just pop this onto a crepe foam former, so I've just dry these, um, so they'll just sort of sit in that slight taco shape on the former, all right? So that's sort of how, how you do that. So because I started, I'm going to work for another like five minutes and just see where we're at. And then if I don't get everything finished, and I do apologize for obviously um, what happened at the beginning, um, I will um, finish this off. Scott will video it, then we'll give that to Paul to post so you can just have a separate post of finishing touches. Now, when you finish these, they need to dry. So obviously these are all dry. We're going to take the quarter width floral tape. So with my quarter width floral tape here, I'm going to just tape the bottom of the leaf. So when you are taping the bottom of the leaf, you hold the tape. You're going to tape about, about two and a half centimeters, about an inch down. All right. We're going to go round and you're going to just slide the floral tape. So you see how the floral tape is like a tube here. You see, and what this means is when you slide this up to the bottom, you're not going to have a big lump of floral tape. Okay. And um, then you're going to just tape down about two and a half centimeters, about an inch. All right. And then that's going to obviously will give you your, your leaves. Now, when we make, hydro, um, when we make uh, wisteria leaves, all right, we work in odd numbers. So this is nine leaves. You could have five, you could have three, you could have five, you could have seven, you could have nine. So you want like a leader leaf and then you want pairs of leaves coming down, okay? So I'm gonna do a group in here of five. So I'm gonna take my here and then I'm gonna use just some fine tweezers, all right? So I'm just gonna take some fine tweezers here and literally about you have three to four millimeters, so about a, less than a quarter of an inch. I'm going to bend the leaves. Now, the reason why I have taped them individually is because we have part of the stem is visible. We don't want to obviously see the two different colors because wire and floral tape is going to be different. We're going to then start with your floral tape. I'm going to come around. And you see, I'm using quarter width tape so we don't get a lot of bulk, all right, because you don't want to have big, ugly stems, all right, it sort of distracts away from your lovely flowers. And then I will come down a little bit further. And then I'm going to then bend this like so. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And then once we get to this stage, I'm going to come down. And when you put in the last two leaves, which I'm just doing this as a group of five, you will add a 22 gauge wire. Okay. So I take now a 22 gauge wire. Doesn't matter whether it's green or white. And then what I do is I just start with a little bit of the quarter width tape and then I'm going to change out to some half width tape. So I'm going to change out to half width tape in green and I'm literally just going to tape down about an inch, about an inch with that. All right. So I'm just going to tape down about an inch, about two and a half centimeters with the green. I'm going to break that off and then I'm going to take some brown floral tape. So this is brown half width tape. And with the brown tape here, I'm going to take my brown tape and then about two and a half centimeters, about one inch down, I'm going to take my floral tape, my brown, and I'm going to come down. And I usually come down about sort of halfway down the wire. And then I'm going to come back on myself. That's going to be two. Now, this is how I do cherry blossoms and uh, dogwoods and oak and things like that. And I'm going to do then three. So what I've done is I come down, I come up, I come down with my floral tape. And then once we get to that point, I'm going to actually texture this. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to texture it with my scissors. So this will actually give me my bark effect. 
Now when I do the last final part with the coloring, I will bring a little bit of chocolate dust here to uh, basically, so the sort of the green will sort of come, brown will come into the green, so you won't have that severe line, okay? So that's how you do the flower. Then you're gonna do your, um, your flowers here. Now there's two, two ways to do this. One way is to, is you can assemble it and then you can color it. Um, typically I tell my students, it's very much personal choice, all right? So a lot of times in my classes, um, I will actually, the students will assemble their projects and then they will go on and then um, they would dust it because it's easier to pick up one stem and then do that at one time. So what you're gonna do here, you're gonna sort of create almost like a bunch of grapes, okay? So you're just gonna just take your wisteria here and I'm gonna show you the coloring on the, the flower in a second, all right? I'm just gonna add that in. But you see how I'm just sort of staggering? And then I'm going to put in my, my um, leaves here, my flowers. Now when you put the flowers in, all right, you take the flower and you're gonna bend it up on itself, all right? So the actual beak is coming upwards towards you. So you're actually gonna pop this in here like this. And then you're just gonna pop the, so here, gonna get the, just gonna build these in. Now these of course already were taped when we made them, these were all taped um, into there. And then these ones want to be sort of just almost like about half, halfway on because as we do the, and then the other thing is, is as you come down the stem, you will uh, make the wires a little bit longer as well. All right. And these ones I've done in a slightly darker purple. This was actually my, uh, my mom, um, sadly, who passed away several years ago, but um, Amethyst was her birthstone, so she loved purple flowers. And, um, when she came over to Atlanta, because at the moment we have wild wisteria, which is just covering everything. I mean, like literally like a hundred feet tall, covering trees, oak trees and things, pine trees. So it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's towards the end of its season now, because we're basically out of spring. We still have the dogwoods, but our cherry and everything. And, you know, daffodils we have blooming usually around Christmas time, January. So we're a little bit more sort of forward than you are in a lot of countries. But you're just going to just, uh, Build the piece into here. All right. And then I'm gonna just gonna put, so you see how I'm actually sort of opening this out. Now, depending on how this is going to be laid on a cake or used, you can make it a little bit more three-dimensional, which means you could have flowers round here like this, or you can have it a little bit more like if it's gonna lay on top of a cake, you could have it a little bit more sort of almost like half relief. So think about like half a bunch of grapes, okay? And then I'm going to put in my last one here. And again, I'm going to take my 22 gauge wire and just going to pop my 22 gauge wire into there. All right. And then what we're going to do, you can just do a little bit of taping with your half width tape because obviously it's easier to tape a larger area with half width tape. And then I will take my brown floral tape. So with my brown floral tape, I'm going to now, with my brown, gonna gain, gonna come down, gonna come up. Now you don't wanna make this too perfect because you want it to look like, almost like a branch. Now when I do cherry, um, I usually do three or four times. When I do like oak, I'll do five to seven because obviously oak is a thicker branch, okay? And again, I'm going to now just texture this like so, all right? So I'm going to now move on to show you the color in on the pieces here. So I'm just gonna put the some paper down. So Paul, am I okay for a couple of minutes? All right, thank you, Paul. <laughs> all right, so color in, I'm going to use, this is uh, like a daffodil yellow, just like a bright lemon yellow color. So I'm going to take a, just gonna take a piece of paper towel here. And generally I never take powder straight from the pot, all right? You always wanna put it onto a napkin or a paper towel there. I'm just gonna actually open it out a little bit, there we go. So just gonna put a little bit of yellow down. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just literally do this on the five, the big, in this case, five flowers. Right in the middle of the petal, you're just gonna put a little tiny yellow dot. So you're just gonna use a small round brush, little yellow dot there like so, okay? Now on the, on the um, blue bonnet I showed you earlier, that is actually a, uh, um, a two little white dots I do with white gel. 
Now this is a combination of Wedgwood and Periwinkle. So this is like a Wedgwood color and then a Periwinkle blue. So I've actually got one to one ratio. And I just keep that pot in a little pot and then just keep this for Wisteria. Now of course, um, different countries you're gonna have different powders and things. But so you're gonna brush this um, from source, from the inside to the outside, because we want this color to obviously cover over pretty much the white. Now it doesn't have to be solid because uh, wisteria, because of the color variation as well. All right, of course there's white wisteria, there's all different shades, but you don't have to make this, as I said, doesn't have to be like a solid color. You know, it's a bit like hydrangeas and then you also will dust a little bit from the back here as well, okay? But just remember, as I said, I'll get to the questions because obviously we're starting late. I'll get to the questions um, afterwards. I'll answer everybody's questions. And um, so you see how you're going to get this nice soft color. So that I'm using there just sort of a round-ish brush. All right, then I'm going to use some purple. So this color is called Royal Purple. All right, this is all on the directions, okay? So I'm going to take some purple color. And in here, I want to brush from source away from source because I want to... Um, emulate this darker color on the edge of my petals here. I'm going to actually brush with the purple from the outside to the inside, you see? So then the color will just, um, and the color will then dissipate as it comes down. So you're going to get this sort of darker color onto here, onto here, and onto here. And on the tip of the beak, so like on the little beak, you're going to use a little bit of the darker purple. Now on the buds, it would just be the periwinkle um, Wedgwood mixture, the darker purple here. And then we finish off the flowers with some prairie green. So prairie green is a soft green. Now if you don't have soft green color like this, just use um, a, like a moss green color, and then you can add a little bit of cornflower cornstarch to it. And so then what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna put a little bit of the this color at the bottom, a little bit of the green at the bottom here, like so, all right? And so that's how you would basically put your uh, wisteria together, all right? Now then the um, leaves, the leaves are going to just be done with the apple green. So I'm using here an apple green color, which is obviously a brighter green. But see, I could take the apple green and just add cornflower to it. And then all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna brush a lateral vein. So I'm just brushing a central vein down the middle of, of almost like a stripe, just to give me the contrast color, all right? Now remember, this is Arati's paste, so this is the, um, the sugar in, and this is the green. It's a nice moss green, and also Wrench will have a nice green as well. I was just sort of showing the, the two pastes. Arati's paste is starch-based, and I uh, saw some of you watched her great um, video last weekend. So that is gonna give you your color in. Now then we're going to, um, you can either use a spray lacquer or a leaf glaze. So this is like the PME spray lacquer, you can use leaf glaze. Leaf glaze is diluted with alcohol, so it's half confectioner's glaze and half uh, grain alcohol. Um, generally, in most of my classes, I use the spray lacquer, just make uh, the spray, making sure that you're on a protected surface. So just a little bit of green onto here, a little bit of the, and that will give you the, um, obviously, look for your, your leaves there. Just gonna stand those up to dry for a second. Now, so just a couple of minutes and then I'll be able to put this together. So now we're going to take your main stem, I'm going to just bend this around with my wisteria. I'm going to add my small leaf here. And I, what I actually want to do is I want to create the vine effect. So I'm actually going to, you see, I'm going to entwine those two together. Then I will take some brown floral tape, just a little bit of brown floral tape here. Sorry, Zoe, I will finish in a second. <laughs> we, all, we all know each other, we all love each other, and uh, so it's a... Uh... So you're gonna put the uh, leaf in here, and then I'm going to add then the... I have another one that I've already pre-made of the smaller, smaller here. Again, I'm gonna just entwine this. Now this is a technique I use also for grapes as well, okay? I'm just gonna bring this together and then I'm gonna put in my larger set of leaves come in here, okay? And I'm going to then just gonna tape down. I'm gonna add a, here, a 20 gauge wire. So 20 gauge wire is obviously quite a strong wire. We generally use for roses and things like that. So 
So I'm going to now add a 20, 20 gauge wire from my main stem. Obviously you don't have to do this quite as quickly. Make sure you don't whack yourself in the head when you do this, all right? And be careful also whacking your flowers on the table. You don't want to obviously break them after you've done that. And then what you do here is you're going to come up and you're going to come down. So it's actually, this is quite a quick, I mean, the, it would take me to make this spray would take me about 30 minutes total time. It's really not that time consuming. And as I said, it's a basic, because the leaves are done without a cutter. And you're going to come down three times. All right, and then I'm going to now just texture this. And then once I've textured, now this is again a technique I use for vines and things. So you're going to take a Kleenex, um, which is like a tissue. You know, it's like a tissue. It doesn't can be a round, a square one or a rectangular one. And we're going to use now full width floral tape. And with full width floral tape, so what I'm going to do here with my full width tape, I'm just going to take my Kleenex. I'm just going to twist it. Now when I did the cake that's on the photograph, I did this all the way around the bottom of it. All right. So literally what you start doing is you start wrapping down the Kleenex, the tissue. You see how I'm actually just twisting this as I go? And you're almost going to mummify it, all right? So it doesn't have to be too perfect. So you see how you're just going to tape down like this, all right? And then when you get to the bottom, so you just will continue down further, all right? You get down to the bottom, and then you're going to come up, and then you're going to come back down again. So, and then you could do like four or five of those. So what you're actually doing there is you're making, looks almost a bit like a cigar vine shape. And then you texture this, all right? And then what I do is I take a little bit of tape, a little bit of brown tape here, there we go. And I'm going to just attach the, so I'm going to put this onto the end here. So I'm going to just attach like the thin end of this onto the end of the wisteria, like this, see? And you see then what I will actually do is I will take this and I will then go round my stem like that, you see? And this is how you create this beautiful, natural look for your wisteria. And of course, then you can tape that off at the bottom, okay? And then the last little finishing touches would be you take a little bit of pale chocolate and some chocolate brown. So this is chocolate, this is chocolate dust, this is chocolate brown with uh, corn flour, corn starch into it. So what I'm going to do here is where the where the um, uh, leaf, where the brown meets the green, I'm going to use just some pale chocolate onto there. So what this is going to do is going to sort of blend, and uh, the color will then dissipate as it comes down. So you see how you're going to blend that in, and then you're going to take actually some full strength chocolate. And then just going to put that just right at the here. And you can also put a touch. Now I had a question this morning from again another Cake Flix member asking, do you use the paper floral tape or plastic? I always use the paper tape because it's matte, but also this takes color very, very well. All right. Just going to pop these out the way. Just going to give my wisteria its nice shape. And then I'm going to bring in a steamer. So I have here, this is a closed steamer. All right. Just happens to be green as well. All right. So I talked earlier on about orange being my favorite color. My nanny lodge, when I was, I think, three or four, she knitted me this orange jumper, and it was absolutely my favorite. I never wanted to take it off. So orange was always my favorite color as a child. And when, um, about 15 years ago, we remodeled my classroom here in Atlanta, I wanted a sort of a signature color to go with my black and gray and white I have in the classroom. So that's where I chose to, uh, to uh, go with the apple green. So now, you know, and as I said, my I think, as Paul said, my, the Green Tornado is my sort of uh, name because I'm sort of obviously going all over the world causing havoc. And uh, usually when I come into Atlanta, it's like um, you usually have one day before I'm flying off somewhere else. But uh, here you can see um, the wisteria, okay? So your wisteria here. And um, so that, was, that is the wisteria. And... Uh, Remind them where they can yeah. get the hand out. So, sorry, Scott, just get in there. Finish up, okay? 
So uh, anyway, so first of all, remember you can get the handout on Cake Flicks, all right? Also, I put it put on my Chef Nicholas Lodge Facebook page as well. So that's where you'll find the handout, um, information about the size guide. Um, I'd like to thank Paul and David for hosting this amazing event. Again, I apologize, the little technical issue we had at the beginning. Um, always when we do lives, there's always potential drama, and so we've had some dark drama today already. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the wisteria, and we'll have fun making that. And as I say, stay safe, everybody, stay strong, and uh, until we can all get back together again in our uh, crazy world, uh, sweet wishes until next time. Bye-bye.